Half the world's people cook their food every day by burning biomass in these three stone fires. Total disaster. The World Health Organization estimates that 4 million people die annually from breathing this indoor air pollution. It results in widespread deforestation, and the soot and carbon dioxide emissions from these fires is a significant contributor to climate change. And yes, that's a bed for sleeping by the fire with a burning coal on it. So after spending about five years building these high-power solar concentrators as a cooking alternative, we noticed how cheap solar panels were becoming. In fact, every five years, the cost of a solar panel is cut in half. So we thought, how about just having an electric burner connected directly to a solar panel? However, the 1,000-watt panel to power a burner capable of boiling a liter of water in six minutes is still going to be way too expensive. So we propose, how about a 100-watt panel? That would be much cheaper. But that's never going to boil water because you lose heat. But if you insulate the chamber where you're heating food, you won't lose any of this heat. And so you can boil your liter of water in one hour, or in a day you could cook about six kilograms of food, enough for a family. So this is what our first prototype looked like, made for barbecuing food. But a boil and simmer cook pot may be much more compelling because one, a good portion of the world's people cook with boil and simmer, and two, by placing the burner in direct contact with your pot of food, you can keep it cool enough so that it doesn't start the insulation on fire. And this allows us to use natural insulation. We experimented with several different kinds of heaters. We made them with nichrome wire and concrete, but the one we liked best was this immersion heater made with stainless steel tubing, nichrome wire, and magnesium oxide insulation inside the tube. Because if the immersion heater is placed directly in the food, then there's no need for an insulating wall between the pot and insulation. The pot that you would have used anyway can be placed directly in the insulation. And so the only expense besides a solar panel is that immersion heater. In our publication, we show our heating and cooling data that we compare to our model. And yes, the technology works very well. But the big question is, are people going to use this? So we partner with Aid Africa in Uganda, and four students spent one month studying village life how people cook, and introducing two solar electric cook stoves. The broad technology consisting of just a solar panel, a heater, and insulation allows for a lot of variations and so people can collaboratively design a method that works best for them. The very rough initial prototype that the students introduced was found to be very ugly and also unacceptable because it was on the ground. So the women who are going to use it redesigned it with the reed perimeter so that it stood higher and looked better. We published our results in Development Engineering in January 2017. I'm Pete Schwartz from Cal Poly, and Peter Keller runs Aid Africa in Uganda. We had 10 student co-authors. Three of them designed and built the original barbecue prototype. Six of them designed and built the boil and simmer prototype. And four of them went to Uganda to study village life and implement two prototypes. So it turns out that the family did use the two stoves, but mostly to heat bath water. And although we recognize that heating bath water provides a service to the people that they wouldn't have otherwise, but we don't need $100 to heat bath water with sunlight. Also, then the technology is not displacing the biomass cooking associated with the respiratory diseases, the deforestation, and the global climate change emissions. And because this use would not displace greenhouse gases, the technology wouldn't be eligible for carbon market funding. So our plan for the coming year is to implement 50 to 100 stoves in a single community so the people there can share cooking ideas and also to provide solar water heaters with each stove that recipients would be more likely to use their stoves for cooking needs. Also, the two families with the new stoves expressed that they would like more available power. And so at Cal Poly, we're developing thermal storage capability so that one block can get hot during the day and cook very quickly when people want to use it in the evening. Additionally, we hope to see a hybridization strategy. That is, people could heat their food first on a fire and then insert it into the insulated chamber. Low intensity fires for just keeping food hot are very inefficient and have more emissions than high intensity fires. So keeping food hot inside of an insulated chamber rather than having low intensity fires would go a long way at reducing deforestation and the emissions associated with both climate change as well as respiratory disease. Want to know more? Please read the paper. So we're interested to collaborate with anyone who wants to. Please contact if you're interested. Thank you.